your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed, Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Shakespeare, you naughty cat. Get away from me. Haven't you got something better to play with than my shoelaces? Oh, come back here. I didn't mean it. Shakespeare, where did she go? Come on, tell me. Now, come on, wag your tail for yes. Was she feeling all right? Yes? Oh, you're no help. That's a very pretty picture. Oh, it's you. You finally decided to come home. Hello, Mama. How long have you been standing there? Long enough. Nice cat, isn't Shakespeare? Stupid cat. Wouldn't tell me where you were. I guess he didn't know. (laughs) Where have you been? I'm exhausted. That doesn't answer my question. Where do you think I've been? Well, you look as if you've gone back to high school. <laughs> Where are all those books in your arms? Books. They're awfully heavy. I'd forgotten how heavy. What are you studying? Philosophy? No. Houses. Claudia, be serious. True, Mama. Houses. One architect in the family should be enough. One architect is too much. I'm trying to balance things. Try balancing your budget first. It won't balance. <laughs> Here, I'll read you the titles of the books, and maybe you'll understand. Of Men and Houses by Moffat and Johnson. The Lure of the Country by Oster Wheel and Green. And The Farmers Finished by Fleming and Walsh. And The Cost of Rebuilding by Stone, White, and Tremor. That last one must be the best. I suppose because it's written by three people. That's true, too. But mainly because it'll tell David a few things. Like? Like why we shouldn't buy that house in Eastbrook, that's all. That's all? Well, that's quite an order for four books to accomplish. But I don't know how else to do it. Well, why don't you just tell David that you don't like the house? Just come out with it. I can't, Mama. Why can't you? You've told me how disappointed you were in the house and the farm and the countryside. Yet, when you say it in front of David, he beams and acts as if it were a great big joke and you were saying the funniest things he's ever heard. No, something is queer someplace. I think I'll go home. Don't go, Mama. I feel like talking. Well, this is a rare occasion. (laughs) Books and talking on the same day. Then tell me. David still loves the house, doesn't he? More than ever. He's mad about it. I'm starting to think he's just plain mad. Mama, it's not only old, it's antique. I thought you liked antique. I do around me, but I wouldn't like to live in one. It's all broken down. The floor squeaks, the ceiling fell on us, and it tilts. What tilts? It's uneven. One side of each room is shorter than the other. Oh, that. Connecticut is famous for slanting seasons, ceilings. I don't think there's one door in Connecticut that's even. Really? That is not a mistake? Oh. Well, you sound disappointed. I am. I thought that maybe when David noticed it, he'd decide he doesn't like the house so well after all. Oh, well, a little thing like that wouldn't change David's mind. It would just give him the house added personality. It honestly befuddles me how he can get so excited about a poor old rickety house that doesn't even look as if it had been built at all. I have a feeling that's what David likes most about it. Mm. Claudia. I know. It's none of my business, but... Mama, I can't tell him. If I could tell him, I would have before now, but I can't because David still thinks I love it. Where did you get that idea? For me, I acted as if I loved it. I raved about everything. The old latches, the squeaky floors, the falling ceilings, the peeling wallpaper. Oh, Mama, I gave a performance that Catherine Cornell would be jealous of. But for heaven's sake, why? Because I think I'm smarter than I am. I thought this wasn't a house, wasn't our house at all. I thought David was playing a joke on me and that he'd take me to the real house afterwards. So, to turn the joke around to him, I pretended to love this silly old house. And the joke's still on me. I see. Claudia, how many times do I have to tell you? 
don't think so much. It only gets you into trouble. I'm certainly in trouble now. I've sort of tried to tell him by making fun of the farm and the house, but he only thinks it's because I'm so excited I don't even want to show it. I don't know what to do anymore. Well, I can't even tell David the truth about how I feel. He'd be so disappointed in me. But I... But I think these books will convince David how impractical it is to live in the country and, and to try and redo an old house. Just wait till he sees them. I won't have to say another word. I hope, I hope. I'm just going to strew these books around and see what happens. Hey, it's me. It's me, too. Any other me around? Me, but I'm not going to be around long. Hello, woman. Hello, David. Mmm, you're cracking my ribs. It's nice. The farmer's wife is looking well tonight, don't you think, Mama? <laughs> Not bad for her. I mean, well, healthy. Oh, that, yes. I'm always healthy when I'm not sick. And I'm never sick, am I? It's spending Friday on the farm that did it. Just thinking about all that nice open air and fresh eggs, fresh milk. And the fresh rain through the roof. Mm, she's wonderful, isn't she? He doesn't know the half of it, does he, Mama? Poor boy. <laughs> Where are you going, Mama? Pick up some store eggs before everything closes tonight. On the farm, Mama, you won't have to hurry. We never close. Hens will get awfully tired, won't they? <laughs> Wait and see. Have a nice evening, you two. I intend to, Mama. And happy reading to you, David. What do you mean by that, Mother? <laughs> You'll see. Good night. Good night, Grandma. Well, here we are. Just the two of us. Hello, darling. Hello, Farmer Norton. You know, you get home awfully late at night, David. I know, but I can't seem to help it. Oh, I'm not scolding you or anything. I, I know you can't help it. It's just there's always a phone call or something that comes at the time I'm leaving or that I have to wait for. Well, we're just lucky we live so near the office or you'd never get home. We are lucky. Are, are you sure you're not going to mind commuting? I mean, if we buy that house in Eastbrook. No ifs about it, are there? Well, won't it be hard on you, leaving so early and, and coming home so late? Oh, that's a small price to pay. You won't get home till 7 o'clock or later most nights. But it will really be getting home. It's all right with me if it's all right with you, darling. It looks as if it's all right with you. <laughs> does it look like that? It certainly does. Come on, sit on my lap. That's a nice invitation. We'll talk about our house. Oh. Now, let me see. We want to build a nursery and an extra bath and then an extension maybe to... David, if we're going to buy a house, hmm? why don't we get one with all those features already in it? No house has everything you want. But this house at least offers all of the possibilities, plus being perfect in itself. For what it is. But, 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 don't you want to look some more? I don't have to. Do you? I don't want to. So there. Now that settles it. Hey, where were you when Mama came by and you weren't here? I was out. You don't say. Where? At the library. At the library? Mm hmm. What on earth is. Oh. Claudia. Hmm? You're not intending to read a book, are you? And why not? Honestly, you and Mama. Well, it's, it's just so sudden. I, I brought home a few of them. You brought home a few of them. What on? Uh, houses and farms. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You know, you know, I love you very much. Why now? Because you go around pretending that you're not sure whether you want this house or not. You try to be... Very sensible and unexcited about the whole thing. The next thing I know, you're in the library reading a bunch of books about it. But you haven't even seen the books. How, how do you know what they say? Just the fact that you went and got them is proof enough for me. Oh, David, you're so trusting. And you're so modest. Now, now, where are these books? We'll sit down right over here and, and we'll read them together. Well... Uh, here's one. It's called, um, Of Men and Houses by Moffat and Johnson. Of Men and Houses? Huh? Hmm. <laughs> Sounds funny. It's not meant to be funny. It's tragic. Tragic? 
How? Here, re- read this part. Where? Right here. Mm. No man should buy the first house he likes. Huh. And no man should buy a house for the things he can do to it any more than he marries a woman to reform her. There. <laughs> David! <laughs> what are you laughing about? <laughs> well, that, that is the funniest thing I ever read. It is? Why? Because I married you to reform you, and it's worked perfectly. David, be serious, please. I, I am. I am. I take a look at you now. You, you're the perfect recommendation, according to this book, for buying the house. I am. Yes, you. Now, what else does the book say? Well, uh, nothing. This book is a dope. Here, reread another one. All right. You were very clever to bring these books home. I was, wasn't mm-hmm. I? Mm-hmm. We'll spend all evening reading them. Maybe it wasn't so clever. Uh, let me see this. Uh, uh, have it? The cost of each egg when homegrown is about three times the cost of an egg bought on the highest open market. Now, what do you think of that for a statistic? That? That's ridiculous. Why? Because when we get through with the eggs, we'll still have the hen and lots of her chickens. And and the hen can still... I I won't eat her if that's what you're thinking. Eat one of our own hens. Why, that's worse than being a cannibal. (laughs) I'm glad to see you're already so sentimental about the hens we haven't got. Oh, what am I saying? David, look, let, let, let's forget about all these silly books. They're nothing but boomerangs. You're right now. You're right. We don't need any books to tell us this is the house for us. Those beautiful old latches and beams. And Drafts and mortgages and plumbingless and plumbing. And, darling, I, I didn't mean it. I wouldn't change... One thing about you, either. Not one beam or buttress or closet. From now on, I'm going to do all of my reforming on the house. I mean, uh, our house. I, I'd much rather you did it on me. You mean you like it just the way it is? Darling, you are wonderful. David, can't you take a hint? You mean these books? Yes, these books. Sure, I know why you got them. Only you could think of that way of telling me you love the house and want it exactly as it stands. Oh, what's the use? I've tried, but everything I say and do works backwards. Oh, David, kiss me so I'll shut up. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya and Roger Starr. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Next time your patience wears thin while you're marketing, take a look around for one of those familiar red coolers. You find them in more and more food stores nowadays with Coca-Cola ice cold and ready for you to enjoy on the spot. In the middle of your shopping, pause and treat yourself to a bottle of ice-cold Coke and see how much easier it is to shop when you're refreshed. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. <laughs>